Here I'm going to talk you through the basics of watercolour painting. Now you can use watercolour painting to create backgrounds, to colour in stamped images, to create your own images as well and to do things like lettering. So there are many tools on the market and these are some of the basic ones that you may have come across. Um, they are used in slightly different ways but essentially once that paint hits the paper they all react very similarly. So we have traditional paints here which are a hard paint. They are dry at the moment until you add the water to them. We have watercolour paint pens so the watercolour is ready mixed in the barrel here. We have ready mixed watercolour paint here. This is very very liquid. Um, you can also water this down further. We have pencils as well, again a hard watercolour that needs to be mixed with water but can be used dry as well as they're in pencil form. So the basic tools that I use are the brushes. Now as you can see there are many different brushes that you can buy and these are just some of the shapes and sizes. So some of my favourites to use are the smaller ones because you can do the detail work but if you are doing things like a wash, a large background for example, you're going to want some of these larger brushes. The paper, now there's lots of different types of paper you'll notice on the market, some called different things but essentially the two main ones are hot pressed and cold pressed. Now the difference between these is really in the manufacturing process. So cold press is the most popular and this is the one that has the rough texture to it. Now this rough texture is given by the felt rollers and the cold process of creating the paper. So cold press paper is a little more absorbent. It has the rough texture and with the colour it won't be quite as vibrant as if you use hot press. So hot press has a smooth surface so it doesn't soak up the uh, paint quite as quickly but then you do have a little more time to work with your colours and your washes and things. So they're the two main differences. By all means cold press is absolutely the most popular and it's certainly the one that I use most of all. To do watercolour painting the only other things you will need is some water and possibly a palette if you want to mix your colours. When you first start practising with watercolours there's a good technique to try and this is the wet to dry and the wet to wet. Now this is talking about paint going to wet or dry paper and you get two different looks from it. So if I wet my paintbrush and I wet some of my paint so I'm just adding water to the top of these dry paint pans here and allowing that water to sit for a few seconds before I start mixing so that paint is now soaking in the water and then lift off a little bit of that paint, still just rubbing it into the water a little. I've got a nice creamy texture there, so I know that's ready to go. So I'm just going to bring that over onto my dry paper. And you can see we've got a really vivid colour here. And as that paint slowly moves away, you can see it runs out, but we get this rough texture here. And this might be the look that you're going for. If you don't want that rough texture, if you want to make sure you get a completely covered section, if we just wet a piece of the paper first of all and make sure that water is in the area that you want it. So I'm going to do a rough rectangle just with some almost clean water. If you are doing a very pale colour, it's a good idea to use perfectly clean water for this with no colour in it already. So there's my rectangle, make sure that's saturated with water. Now with this the water isn't going to go anywhere besides where you put it. I'm then going to come in to my paint and just tap the end of it into here and what will happen gradually is that will fill that water block there the colour will gradually work its way down towards the bottom and I can use a damp brush just to manipulate it a little bit so I'm just going to use a damp brush just touching on the edges there and here we get a much smoother look that will gradually, if I left that to, to dry on its own that would gradually fill that water block in itself but we don't get any of this rough texture showing through that is completely saturated 
if you lay color down that's either too heavy or in an area where you don't want it the beauty of watercolor painting is that you can remove some of it if not all of it so this paint has now dried and you can see we've got that lovely watercolor effect that we often look for with this sort of painting compared to the um, wet to dry where we've got that rough look I'm going to take a wet paintbrush here and just lay a little water down in a strip down the centre of this so just to show you how we can lift this colour up now I've just done a line there I've let that water sit much as we do let the water sit on the paint pans there then I'm just going to start working this into the colour clean your brush off and dry your brush off as well so this is now a dry brush and it's also known as a thirsty brush so we can now lift up and that will soak up some of that water along with some of the colour. So we can start working our colour up in this way. Let it sit just for a few moments. And then when we're happy that that started to soak up some of the paint, we can take our kitchen towel, need a clean one for this, lay it down, press down and lift up and you can see some of that colour is coming up. So you can repeat this process a few times until you're back to a shade that you are happy with. Now watercolour pencils are a really handy and portable way of doing watercolours. You don't have to use them with the water, you can use them dry, they are beautiful colouring pencil as they are. But what I love about them is you can still create shades and tones. So with a pencil, just as you would with a normal pencil, you can colour in on an image or you can colour in your own images if you want to, but I prefer to use a stamped image as a guide. Now I'm going to colour this quite dark at the base. I'm pressing reasonably hard and you'll notice that the colour, the lead as such, is much softer than the usual pencil. So I'm going to colour about a third of this petal here and then take a wet brush I'm going to brush that over the colour that I've just applied there, clean my brush off and then drag that colour out to the rest of the petals. And you can see by adding or cleaning my brush off and adding water, I've then got a paler colour. And again, I've been able to transition from the dark to the light. Now you can do this as well using the pencil from that dark to light. So if you were to press much harder at the base, a little bit lighter in the middle and then really light on the outside so you can see already that we've got that blend and then do exactly the same but I would start from the end and gradually work the water and you see what happens is the water almost dissolves the pigment in that pencil and it blends out and it fills in all the spaces it settles into the paper for a beautiful blend so that's one way you can use watercolor pencils another watercolor medium is these pens now there are lots on the market that are brush pens primarily usually made for lettering but they can be used for watercolor painting as well so with these we have the watercolor paint already inside the barrel it's already mixed as well but we can take these directly to our project so in exactly the same way as I did with the pencil I'm just going to colour in the base of the leaf and then before this dries I'm going to bring in some water and gradually blend that colour out in the same way so you can see this is also a lovely precise way of doing some colouring now that that's wet I can actually come in and add even more colour if I need to by dipping the tip of the brush pen into the water and that will just soak up even more colour until I'm happy with the result. If you'd like to blend from one colour into another it's very very easy but I'd suggest using a wet base first so apply your water just where you need it and I'd work in small sections as well so on this stamped image and this could be a hand-drawn image of your own otherwise I'm just going to wet one petal I'm then going to bring over I'm going to do almost like a, a pansy effect so I'm going to dampen the dark purple and 
a yellow here. Now these colours usually wouldn't blend very well together but with watercolours you can absolutely make that happen. So just dampening there each of the pans of colour, making sure there's lots of water sitting on top so that they're ready to use. And just making sure this is wet where I need it. The water is sitting on the surface. The water will only go where you put it. So um, unless you've oversaturated, it will sit in that petal shape exactly. So I'm going to take the purple here and I'm going to dip that into the edges of my petal. Then I'm going to thoroughly clean my brush and I do suggest using some absorbent kitchen towel to dry your brush off and ensure there's no colour left on there. And then I'm going to go into the yellow and do the same into the base. Now I've used here quite a saturated colour for both. So now I'm going to take a, a damp brush and just gently drag a little of each of the colours into each other very carefully not doing it too quickly because I want to have complete control over this and you can add more or less colour now there is a trick with watercolours which I love and this I think this makes it even easier to use is you can actually lift off colour if you need to so while the colour is still wet you can actually press down with an absorbent kitchen towel and as you can see you can lift off a lot of that colour. This also helps with that blending as well because it takes away any excess colour. Lastly I want to show you how to create a wash with watercolour. So with, for this what I would suggest doing is taping down your background because you're going to be saturating the paper with water we use a special tape. Now this is a low tack tape and it's um, usually called decorator's tape. And this will seal in the edges. So you will have a border around all of your piece of cardstock, but you can then, um, if you need to, trim off the edges. I'm going to go around all four edges here. That's not very straight. See, this is low tack, so you can gently lift it off and reposition it, but it's actually quite sticky. So for this one, you're not going to have your paint and your water seeping underneath because as I said with watercolour paper, the water will only go where you put it. So it won't hit these edges. There we go, so a nice even border. Now what that does, as well as keeping your edges clean and dry, this is going to keep the watercolour paper flat. So there won't be any warping, no matter how much water you put on there. Once you get warping, if the paper's doing this, your ink is going to settle into the dips in the paper. And that's what we don't want. We want to be able to put the paint and the colour where we want it. Now for a wash, I'd suggest using a larger brush. And this is a mop brush. And I'm just going to mop all over my paper with water so this is just plain water all over and just allow that to sit for a few moments it won't be for long I'm just going to dry the edges of my tape while that's soaking through now you have the option of lots of different paint choices here so we're going to come back to our solid paints because these are the most common ones and we're going to create a sunset look so I'm going to start at the very top with a, um, a red. So I'm just making sure I'm adding water to the colours that I'm going to need. I'm going to need to go down to an orange. And then maybe a yellow, which we've just used. And then we'll finally finish with the blue at the bottom. We might put a purple in there as well so there'll be lots of colors going in so if we start at the with the purple and that will go into the red into the orange into the yellow and then into the blue of the daylight so I suppose it will be sunset or sunrise so starting with the purple now this is a very saturated paint color so I'm just going to wash that over the top 
If you feel like your colour isn't saturated enough, just dry your paintbrush off a little bit and go back in with this colour, brushing it in and downwards. Then I'm going to come in with the red and brush it in where the purple stopped, but I'm also going to lightly use sideways strokes to go upwards into the purple. Next is my orange. So again, if you need to, you can go back to another colour and add a little more of that, but always working the same direction of strokes, making sure there's no excess sitting around the edges. Then the next one is going to be the yellow. Pale colours like yellow, I do find I need to use them a little more saturated. And then finally down to our blue, which would have been the daylight. So any areas like this, you can actually use a dry brush. So if you squeeze the water out of your brush, so where that ink or that paint has is sitting on the side there, we can actually soak it up with our drier paintbrush. It's called a thirsty brush. It's actually a technique that's fantastic for lifting off colour. So just working down there. And we've got a beautiful sunset technique. Now that is very pale. You can absolutely allow that to dry and then build up the colours if you want to. I will allow that to dry and then we'll lift off those edges and see what that looks like. Now that this is fully dried, I'm going to carefully remove my tape. So just do this ever so gently. You don't want to do this too quickly, otherwise you could risk tearing the paper. And this tape, if you can keep it flat and fairly clean, is reusable as well. You see those beautiful sharp edges that we've got there. And this is going to be the perfect background for your cards, for maybe an image that you want to stamp onto this or it's just really lovely as a backing paper if you want to cut it up and use it, maybe for tags and such.